Hello, I am Major Jeremy Stevenson, a member of the 300 Military Intelligence Brigade of the Utah Army National Guard and a social studies teacher here at Tigley High School. It is my privilege to be the master of ceremonies today. I would like to personally welcome all the veterans, their families, our distinguished guests, our student body, and our faculty today. To all the veterans in attendance today and their families, we would like to invite you to stay for the luncheon that will be held in your honor immediately following this program. At this time, I'd like to turn the time over to, me, uh, to Mayor Curtis. Following Mayor Curtis's remarks, Ms. Provo will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by uh, one of our students, Abby Lundberg, performing the National Anthem.
thank you, Mayor Curtis, for being with us today. And thank you, Kelsey, for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, Adam Jensen, our, student, our, our event chair, will offer some opening remarks, followed by our student body president, Liza Smith, who will explain the Armed Forces Medley that will then be performed by the Tim Buse Symphonic Band. Good morning and welcome. My name is Adam Jensen, and I have had the great honor of being Timview High School's Public Relations Officer this year. I want to personally thank you all for coming on this special day to honor our beloved veterans and the sacrifices they have made for this country. I have been humbled to work with so many wonderful men and women who have made this memorable event possible. I want to give a special thanks to Taylor Pugmire, as well as the many other public relations officers that came before me. They paved the way to make the task of organizing this event run smoothly and enjoyable for everyone involved. Over the past couple of months, I have developed a greater appreciation for our veterans and what they have done for us. During the summer, I was able to attend Boise State at Weber State University, a program that promotes both political and leadership skills and gives a special emphasis on local veterans. Over the course of that week, I met people and heard stories that changed my life and that brought to my attention part of the lack of respect that my generation seems to have for our veterans. Before then, I had always seen Veterans Day, as many people my age probably still see it. Just another day with an assembly to get me out of school. But Boy State showed me that Veterans Day is so much more. It's a day we have to honor these men and women that serve our country. Men and women that serve our country despite all hardship, despite all pain, and despite not having a knowledge of a safe return home. I hope that respect for veterans does not start and end with this day, but that we can use this day to remind us of what we should have in our hearts each day. For my Eagle Scout project this year, I chose to have youth interview their grandparents as well as others in our community and put a special emphasis on World War II in the interviews. Those who were interviewed told about life during the war and the love and support the American people had for our World War II soldiers. I was able to interview my own grandparents as well as several others and the stories they shared I greatly cherish now. My grandfather, George Pace, shared this story from when he was about my age. His father had a meeting at a local church building, and to help him get ready, my grandfather was in the basement of their farmhouse, polishing his father's shoes. He still remembers hearing the telephone ring, and only moments later, hearing heartbreaking cries from his dear stepmother. His brother, my grandfather Reed, had just been killed. He was killed in France on the third day of the D-Day invasion. My grandfather remembers getting in the truck to carry out a responsibility on the farm, and an overwhelming feeling of grief overcame him as he realized he would never see his two brother Reed again. As my grandfather said, it's just part of the price we pay for wars. I have here my great uncle Reed's Purple Heart Award. This award is given in the name of the president to those who are wounded or killed when serving under any branch of the military. For me, this award is a reminder of the bravery and determination that not only my great uncle Reed had, but all those who serve alongside him. The story of my great uncle Reed, like countless others, is why I give my respect on Veterans Day. Because of this story and others like it, I ask each and every one of you here today to ponder and keep in your hearts the sacrifices made on your behalf, for they are great. I would ask that you keep your ears and your hearts open as we listen to the stories of these wonderful men we have here with us today. And as we leave today, remember why we have Veterans Day, to give our hearts to those who served because they gave their lives so we could live. God bless America and God bless our veterans. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please join me in honoring America's military as we listen to the Armed Forces Medley, a musical tribute that incorporates songs from the United States Navy, Army, Marines, Air Force, and Coast Guard. To honor and recognize those who have served in America's military, we invite our servicemen and women to please stand as your branch's song is played. If anyone in the audience has a family member who has served or who is serving but not present, please stand in their stead as their branch is recognized. Thank you. Adam, thank you for your marks and thank you for all the time and effort you put into this. A lot of times uh, after these events, people come up and thank me. I just show up and talk at the mic, which my wife will tell you is pretty easy for me to do. Um, it's the students here uh, and our student government leaders that put it all together. So please, uh, if you want to express gratitude for uh, all the work that's been done, please find them and express that to them. At this time, Candace Brown will spotlight one of our special guests, followed by the Timpu Symphonic Band performing Hymn to the Fallen. Then Cameron Smith, followed by Aurelia Ward, will spotlight two more of our honored guests, after which the Timpu Jazz Band will perform Isn't She Lovely?
In 1965, Ernesto Nunez became one of a small minority that volunteered for active service in the Army during the Vietnam War. He knew that it was his duty to protect our country by serving in the Army. Ernesto recently told me that the distinguishing characteristic of all members of the Army is, quote, the willingness to help your comrades in need. Ernesto Nunez is a prime example of this characteristic. His service began in Fort Lewis, Washington, but he was soon sent overseas to fight in the Vietnam War. In Vietnam, he served his fellow comrades as a grenadier by attacking enemy infantry while in combat. A few months before the end of his service in Vietnam, Ernesto Nunez, recognized by his superiors for his readiness to help others, was promoted to the rank of sergeant. After returning to the States, Sergeant Nunez was ordered to report to drill sergeant school where he underwent rigorous and strict training where the soldiers might be penalized for simple things such as having their hands in their pockets. A few weeks later, Drill Sergeant Nunez began to train new recruits in Fort Polk, Louisiana, at all times providing his trainees with an excellent example of helping others. Several months later, he was honorably discharged from the Army. Ernesto Nunez helped many of his fellow soldiers while he served in the Army, but he will always remember the soldiers that saved him. He said, quote, my mind is on the ones that gave the ultimate sacrifice, and their names are etched in my mind. Thinking back on his military career, Ernesto said that, quote, to enjoy the freedoms that we Americans have, we need a military. He continued, look at world events, what other countries desire for us. His meaning is clear, we need a military to protect us, and we need soldiers within that military, like Ernesto Nunez and his comrades in Vietnam, who sacrificed everything to help us, their fellow comrades in need, continue to live in freedom. To thank Ernesto Nunez for his service, we would like to now present him with this plaque.
We are here today to honor the amazing men and women who have served our country. I was privileged with the chance to interview Petty Officer Brock and hear his stories from his days in the service. Petty Officer Brock served for 14 months in Iraq, including being stationed in Baghdad, Balad, Tikrit, and Mosul. He is with the Navy working on a strike team as an ISR tactical controller, meaning he was the backbone to securing a tactical mission and providing overwatch during the operation. The strike team relied on his team to assist them in staying safe and knowing what the enemy was doing. He put in his all every day, no exceptions. He said there wasn't any room or time for a job half complete. It required 100% all the time. Depending on my mission on any given day, it oftentimes meant our troops were in harm's way and it was my job to keep them safe. I worked 12 hour days, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Oftentimes we worked longer than just 12 hour shifts. The only time they would have off was when there were sandstorms. Can you imagine? There is a level of privacy to be kept, but regardless of the details, he got to work with the highly trained of our military, wonderful men and women who sacrificed with him. As can be imagined, he said it could be challenging. At one point, he was working for a solid month, trying to track down a sniper that had shot and killed one of our soldiers. With persistence, his work paid off, and he was able to locate the person and their position, thus giving the strike team the opportunity to bring him in. He occasionally got the chance to go and see some of the surrounding villages. He genuinely enjoyed immersing himself in their culture and getting to be a part of their new experiences, such as eating their food, talking to them, and learning their religions and ways of life. I want to leave you with something that he said he would like to pass on. He learned many things while in service, but one important thing being how privileged we are. Everyone, it's a blessing to live in America. We forget that drinking fresh water from a tap Having clean clothes, taking a shower, are luxuries in many countries. These things we often throw to the side because they are so familiar in our lives. Our lives are blessed abundant, abundantly. Do not forget that. Also, he truly appreciates all our men and women that serve in the military and appreciates those who serve in our community, whether in government, as policemen and women, or teachers. He is grateful that they make our community a better place. He expressed his thanks for being able to be a part of our celebrations, but truly we should be thanking him and all veterans here and elsewhere for their service. Our country would be nothing without you brave men and women. We thank you. We would like to give him this plaque as a thanks for his service. Here in America, we are so lucky to have the potential freedom to achieve so much. We truly do have the opportunity to live the American dream. We certainly have it good, and we need to be grateful for that. I know you have probably heard it a thousand times that you need to be grateful for the services rendered by veterans. I would like to stress this yet again. We do need to realize and respect that these brave women and men have sacrificed so much just so we can have the potential to be great. We know many of these brave souls, many of our grandparents, aunts, uncles, even fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters have served our country. I had the opportunity to learn about a little bit more about one of these extraordinary veterans, James Tuck. And even though he is not in attendance today, I would still like to honor him for his service. He enlisted in the military at age 19 and served in Iraq, and he can pretty much fix and drive most of the wheeled vehicles in the Army. He learned many things during his service, such as respect, hard work, and discipline. His advice to us is that we are able to do a lot more than we think we are capable of. I am glad we have this day to honor great veterans like James Tuck in our lives and would like to thank him for his service. It is a great honor on this Veterans Day in 2015 to introduce and welcome to Tinview High School our distinguished guest, Colonel David F. Gunn. We offer our deepest appreciation to him for being here today 
and taken a vow to defend our country, protect our freedoms, and also serve in our community. Colonel Gunn was born and raised in Southern California. His father and uncles um, served in World War II. After graduating from Colvina High School, Colonel Gunn attended Utah State University and served in the Army ROTC. From there, he received a commission to serve as an officer in the Army at the time of the Vietnam War. He trained primarily at Fort Lewis, Washington in, sing in signal and electronic intelligence security. His job was to intercept enemy communications. He described it as a great career if you didn't get killed. While on combat tour in Vietnam, nine of his buddies perished and 40% of the infantry were killed. Colonel Gunn accepted the obligation to put his life on the line and had a 40-year military career with time spent as a cadet, active army, army reserve, and in the Army National Guard. He was a former company and battalion commander and was awarded the Bronze, Bronze Star and Legion of Merit awards. As a citizen soldier, he has worked 30 years for Provo City as an assistant planner, airport manager, assistant, community development director, and director of public services. He is also the former president of, J of Provo JCs and the Provo Kiwanis Club. Colonel Gunn has enjoyed his career and has especially cherished his time being able to serve in Utah. He is lovingly supported by his wife and three children, along with four beautiful grandchildren, granddaughters, who proudly like to look at his chest full of medals. Colonel Gunn, it is an honor to meet you and thank you for your lifetime service on our behalf. In part, we wish to repay you by pledging our lives and actions of that of service and integrity in bettering our country and community. It is an honor as a representative of Timview High School to award Colonel David Gunn this plaque for his valiant service in the military. That was nice. <laughs> uh, I was asked uh, a few days ago to talk about this service and uh, what makes it unique. And to me, the thing that really makes it unique is it's totally done by students. And look at this, look at this beautiful facility and all these decorations and the wonderful band and the choir and the speakers and the leadership. Uh, students, what a great school. You folks that have your kids here should be proud and uh, honored and uh, <laughs> proud and honor honored and confident that your 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 students when they when they graduate from Timview are going to be prepared to, to face the world and go on to other and bigger and better things. Uh, through the years I've been involved in this along with the Freedom Festival, Provo City, and those wonderful folks from the Freedom Festival who, some of, some of whom are their leadership are here in the front row today with their red blazers on. What a, what a great organization that is. And all those events they sponsor throughout the year for our community. Uh, I'm just, I participate in several of them every year and I'm, I'm so thankful to have them be partners with us as we put on this wonderful uh, event every year. I'd like to pay a special tribute to Cassidy, ba Cassidy Baker and Holly Bowers, who've been mentors to the students through the years that I've worked with. Also, a uh, special tribute goes out to this year's committee. Adam Jensen, Rebecca Eyring, Holly Lewis, Haley Spackman, Brady Knapp, Lindsey Bird, uh, Amanda Use, uh, Dathel Larson, Megan Nelson, and Ali Barnett. This, this committee, those are the folks that were the leaders that put this thing together along with many, many others from the student body. And so uh, thank you to them for the great job they've done. <laughs> today, today we honor our veterans in this memorial service. And to me, all vets are, are very special. 
there's no experience like basic military training known as boot camp. There, military recruits mature and literally become grown-ups. During the rigors of this experience, uh, to, uh, excuse me, during the rigors of this experience, obedience to orders and constant alertness must be bred into every soldier. Military leaders are not managers or foremen. They are commanders. In stressful tactical moments, there is no time to deliberate alternatives. A commander must be knowledgeable and, most of all, decisive. Soldiers must learn those skills and couple them with courage. They're not messing around in tactical situations at all. As General Patton said in his famous address to his soldiers, quote, every man does his job. Every man is important. An army is a team. It lives, sleeps, eats, and fights as a team. This individual hero stuff is bull. I have modified that somewhat. <laughs> In the Declaration of Independence, the patriots who founded this nation pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Calvin Coolidge said, quote, the Declaration of Independence is a great spiritual document. It is a declaration not of material, but of spiritual concepts. Equality, liberty, the rights of men are not elements that we can see and touch. They are ideals. The founders of this country, as they pursued the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, did so at great personal risk and inconvenience. Many were arrested, lost their property, or were imprisoned. Several were killed in the Revolutionary War. In defense of our freedom, veterans are the ones who took up the cause of these struggles from our founders and followed their commanders into harm's way. In these veterans, we find a race of men like our fathers and grandfathers who served and fought for the principles that Washington, Franklin, Jefferson, and Madison were contending for. We understand what they did and what today's military are doing is what ensures our continued safety, prosperity, and freedom. Two, our soldiers do much to enrich the countries we assist. In Vietnam, my unit sponsored an orphanage, providing food, clothing, and medical supplies to our kids that we grew to love. In the Middle East, freed people were proud to display their purple finger, denoting they had the opportunity, often for the, often for the first time, to exercise the democratic right to vote. Our presence helps many young girls attend school, unfettered by the racist concept that women should not be educated. In America, our military leaders follow the political leadership of civilians. As von Clausewitz said, quote, War is regarded as nothing but the continuation of state policy by other means, unquote. General MacArthur wisely noted that, quote, soldiers are not warmongers. Every soldier prays for peace, for it is he who must suffer the deepest wounds and scars of war. Today's, today's military are particularly exceptional. The draft ended in 1973. 
So those in uniform today are all volunteers. So even though most Americans have no direct knowledge of military experiences, all should respect and venerate today's service members and respect all veterans who served and sacrificed their time and talents, if not their lives, which they put on the line when they enlisted. Today's soldiers still vow to defend the U. They still vow to defend the USA against all enemies, foreign and domestic. They still go wherever their Uncle Sam sends them. They still pledge to never surrender while they have the means to resist. Please stop and think for a minute about what that means. My hope today is that we will all remember and respect our servicemen and women, past and present, and that in the day we all dread, but that is inevitable, we will stand to defend this great country against all enemies, foreign and domestic, with our lives, fortunes, and honor. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Gunn. As we end today, I'd like to say thanks to the folks that helped plan this and particularly to the wonderful musical groups that have provided music for us today. I'd like to take one last uh, liberty as the master of ceremonies, and, and I think most veterans would join me in this. On Veterans Day and uh, after many other events, um, veterans are uh, acknowledged and um, people come up and say thank you. And uh, there's books written about the, the time um, and sacrifice that veterans make. Um, but all too often, uh, the families of the veterans um, don't get that same recognition. So I'd like to ask if you are a family member of a veteran, if you'd stand real quick, and we'll just give you one more hand. So please stand. Thank you very much. It's hard to leave your family and serve, but uh, it's a lot easier when you know that your family is supportive of your decisions. Life in the military can be challenging in many ways, but I invite all the students here today to consider how you can serve your country and your, your fellow man, whether it be as a soldier, a sailor, an airman, a Marine, as a member of the Coast Guard or in some other capacity. Again, we'd like to remind all of the veterans and their families to stay for the luncheon. As we close today, the Timpview uh, Symphonic Band will play a postlude. We ask that all the students remain seated while our veterans and their families exit this way uh, towards the, the luncheon. Thank you for your time today, and to the students, thank you so much for your, um, your respect and your reverence today. Thank you for coming.